I'm Grandma Crazy, spelled with a K, author of children's picture books. My grandchildren gave me the name of Grandma Crazy. I'm not sure why, but maybe it's because of things like this. Swimming in bubbles is a favorite activity. Turning boxes into race cars and visiting with snake friends is always fun. Or maybe it's because of things I make my grandkids do at Christmas time. Or could it be because we have so many cats? but only six at a time. I am showing all of them here because they are the characters in my mango books and they have all been great emotional support animals for my kids. Maybe they call me Grandma Crazy because we have such a large family that there's always some kind of celebration or chaos going on. So things do get crazy with a C sometimes. I have nine children with grandchild number 15 arriving in a few months. And I can't leave out my five grandpuppies. It's always fun when they come to visit. Two of my daughters were adopted from the foster care system. And this is a picture of my three youngest daughters on adoption day of our youngest. I have loved being a foster mom. And I have been very blessed to have fostered over 100 children, some of whom are still very much a part of our family. I've worked with children in many different capacities throughout my life. The sounds of their laughter, their smiles, the joy and the excitement that bursts out of them over the smallest of little things, it just lifts me. It, it, I'm sure it does you too. A while back, I realized that the time had come for me to step back from fostering and teaching. It was now time for me to enjoy the family I created, to enjoy the adults my children were becoming and still are becoming, and to experience being grandma. A crazy grandma, apparently, but a grandma. And in doing this, a couple of things happened. One was I missed being able to make groups of children smile and laugh and helping them to discover and to learn new things. The second thing was I noticed that in the growing use of technology in our younger kids, kids do seem to be getting smarter and wiser sooner. Some of the big words that come out of those little mouths are just amazing and adorable. But technology does have a lot to do with that, however, as with everything, there is a concerning side to the technology advances of today. Among those concerns are, what happens with individual imagination? And where did the fairy tales go? And how much is technology affecting our kids' social skills? As I listen to my grandchildren using large vocabulary words in the proper context, but happen to ask them for eye contact away from their devices, uh, the desire to write children's books first came about. I love story time and the benefits that come with reading aloud to children from real live actual paperback books. Plus writing picture books would be a way that I could continue teaching children and maybe even bring on those beautiful smiles even if I was not actually there with them. My teaching philosophy has always been to make learning so much fun that they really don't realize they're learning something. And with that philosophy in mind, I wrote the first book, Big Bear Fair. Um, it is intended to be a book that shows how much fun words can be. And I chose to use homophones and a bit of rhyme with a few new vocabulary words to mix up the learning with fun. There's also a subtle message in there for adults, including myself. And there is a vocabulary page that introduces the new words. So let's peek inside Big Bear Fair. Big Bear Fair is about a boy looking out the window while his mom is very busy on the computer. Out the window, the boy sees some amazing things. He sees a bear bear looking debonair. Mom, being very busy on the computer, is not really listening. The boy tells mom about the rare bear playing solitaire and other bears that he sees. But mom remains in her zone. Until he asks her why are all those bears out there? I think we can all recognize that mom zone. Did you catch the fun homonyms and the couple new vocabulary words in there? Albert Einstein is a pretty smart guy, right? He once said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And if you think about it, it is imagination that creates knowledge 
and birth innovation. It also can provide hope and take you to magical places. Today's technology, when used properly, has positive effects on our children's knowledge and imagination. However, studies are showing that technology is also causing a few concerns, like daily reading time and freeform imagination. While, while tech is very entertaining and is providing a ready-made in imagination that is limited by its own boundaries and its own rules, our children are still needing opportunities to develop their own free-form imagination without those boundaries and without those rules. As an example, you've probably seen a child receive a gift and then spend all their time playing with a box. The box is a free-form imagination. It can become anything the child wants it to become. It can be a hat, a playhouse, a boat, a car, whatever their little minds come up with. There's endless possibilities. It was the thought of free-form imagination that was behind writing this this my second book, If I Could. If I Could, um, I wrote it with a desire to help expand free-form imagination in children. It is formatted to read aloud at story time, and it has open discussion opportunities throughout the book, along with a vocabulary page to introduce a few new words, and all while having fun with imagination. So let's peek inside if I could. If you could create a world of your very own, what would it be like? Would school be held in a pool? Would horses be blue? What if honey was made by chimpanzees instead of stinging bees? If you could create a world of your own, wouldn't it be funny if rocks were used for money? Would cereal grow on trees? Would you have superpowers? Would you still take showers? This page is for beginning an open discussion with your young readers to broaden and open their imagination. Then at the back of the book are blank pages for your kids to use their own imagination by drawing their own world creations right in the book. Albert Einstein also said something very interesting about fairy tales. He said that if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want your children to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. Fairy tales have many benefits. They help build emotional resiliency, build positive problem solving skills, and they enrich imagination. I like something that G.K. Chesterton said. He said that fairy tales do not tell children that dragons exist. Children already know that dragons exist. Fairy tales tell children that the dragons can be killed. There are dragons in our children's world and they will require conquering. We can't protect our kids from every dragon there is out there. In fact, it's our dragons or our conflicts and our trials that are one of life's very best teachers. Fighting these dragons is where we acquire our growth and our coping skills and our emotional resilience. I think the world needs more fairy tale heroes to emulate and vanquish their foes with. So why not build up that emotional resiliency and gain conflict resolution skills in magical imaginative lands where fairies are granting wishes and there's leprechaun follies and talking animals. It's just so much softer and lighter of a way to teach those skills and killing people off and blowing their things up constantly like I see with today's superhero adventures. In my work with kids, one of the big dragons I saw was children who struggled with allowing themselves to be who they are. Feeling like they don't belong or they don't deserve good things to happen to them, including unconditional love. In fact, many of them had never known unconditional love. And I want those children to know that everyone has their own struggles and their own differences. That every child, including themselves, is worthy of unconditional love. Being the best you that you can be is what really matters. And so that is a dragon that I chose to address in my fairy tale book called Mango the Long-Haired Ginger Cat. And I'm excited to say that Mango has earned the Mom's Choice Award, the Five Star Reader's Favorite Award, and is a finalist in the Eric Hoffer Da Vinci Eye. 
So let's look inside Mango. Mango was not a happy cat. She wanted her life to be different than it was. She wanted to be someone different than who she was. Every day, Mango watched the birds fly by and wished she had wings so she could fly free like they did. She was sure that would make her a happy cat. Until one day, Mango met a magical cat fairy who granted her wish and gave her wings. When Mango flew home to show her family her beautiful new wings, she discovered that no one recognized her. Soon she found herself alone and hungry. She then began to realize that she had a lot to be happy about in her life. She had a family who loved her just the way she was. What she needed to do was to be the best mango she could be. That is what would make her a happy cat. There are worksheets at the end for kids to write down what they have to be happy about and what they can do to be the best they can be. My vision is to make Mango a series. Book two comes out real soon. It is an adoption story where Mango learns the reason she looks so different from her family is that she is adopted and that love is what makes a family. My message is that let's embrace our differences. They are part of what makes us who we are. Let's be grateful for what we have and just be the best you that you can be. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.